Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to JJO Gaming and welcome back to the Republic of the Netherlands, the Dutch Republic. And we have still our, uh, <laughs> our, our destroyed statues here. I think they, those should have gone away uh, a while ago, but <laughs> I guess the game uh, wants to keep them there. That's fine by me. All right, yes, last episode we had a very, very bloody war over here in Indonesia, but it did leave us with some nice trade uh, trading posts so that's good uh, we also ended last episode looking at france who is about to lose the 30 years war to austria <laughs> so it seems that the catholics are gonna win the 30 years war so let's see uh let's see what happens although uh i say that is the palatinate catholic baden they're here right somewhere it, it seems that they are catholic yeah maybe not for long though all right well Let's see what happens there, uh, at least for this episode. I think I will probably cut out a lot because we're going to wait for our manpower reserves to recover. Otherwise, we cannot really do anything. In the blackness that engulfed the night, fire-lit streams copiously gushed down the hill like an open wound. Their harsh redness impossible to ignore. A glowing avalanche of volcanic ash followed them like an impatient hunter. Its open mouth eager to devour everything in its path until its hunger was finally satiated. Wow. <laughs> okay. Lose two base production in Balitung. Okay, I guess there's a volcanic eruption and <laughs> some guy at Paradox has, uh, has taken the opportunity to uh, to practice his uh, novel writing skills. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't leave his name down here. Please contact me if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hire a ghost rider. Oh well. Uh, two base production. That sucks a little bit. Oh well. It's not a big deal. We have this mainly for... Actually, we can probably increase production a little bit. Uh, we can also invest in a new idea. But we'll probably wait for the technology thing, right? Yeah. I think we can do that. Although, global autonomy change minus 0 0.05. That's actually great. Let's do it gradually getting back up to our normal manpower reserves which is good uh ooh, they're both great floris marnix and caspar van oranje are our new potential leaders uh let's see how the okay we are 100 percent in favor of the statist so i think it's probably good to go with an orangist five four six though damn uh merchant bankrupt let's save him although we have been actively propagating our religion in new holland many members of the massachusetts tribe have been adopting the reformed religion regardless uh, that's fine. Kaspar van Oranje. Very good. Uh, we are currently uh, colonizing this area here in South Africa, but we should probably start colonizing uh, the Spice Islands next. Uh, in fact, should we do that right now? Now let's just wait until uh, Zuid Rivier has finished colonizing. Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't pay attention, I guess. Why didn't you guys call me in, you idiots? They don't even have cores. Oh, no, they, they, they do have cores. Okay, thank God. The Iroquois <laughs> have captured all of my land. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we're going to go to war with the Iroquois next. <laughs> Jesus Christ, is this game sometimes, man. The colonial nation system, I really, really don't like it. Like, they can just go to war with somebody. And if they don't call you in, they have a very high chance of losing that war. And then you just randomly lose land. <laughs> it's really dumb. Okay, um, we should encourage Hello. Fine, whatever. I guess we'll go to the Americas next, then. <laughs> with our new army. Once the uh, manpower reserves have recovered. We can go to the next level in military technology. Let's do it. We can have Latin Caracole Cavalry. What is that? Yeah, 16th and early 17th century, the most common combat formation for Western European cavalry was the Caracole, which could be employed in two ways. With the first method, the first rank of the cavalry formation charged frontally against the enemy, the cavalrymen firing their weapons at a range of 30 to 50 paces. Then they turned around and returned to the rear of the formation and became the last rank. The following rank were charged in the same way, yada yada yada. With this formation, the first rank was always charging while the other ranks were loading and waiting for their turn to charge. Another method was to charge in a single file, firing when the enemies were on the right, on their right, and then con uh, continuing round in a circular motion. Okay, okay, so it's basically uh, regular musketeer tactics. 
or uh, that, that's how they did it in the Napoleonic era as well with infantry. Like what the first the first line shoots their muskets and then moves back, and then the second line moves forward, shoots their muskets, and then the first line has reloaded their muskets, moves forward again, shoots again. That's similar to this, and then the second one is just uh, standard horse archer tactics. That's how the Mongols fought. And I guess there was a, a musket version of that as well, the Karakoli cavalry. Okay, fine. We have recovered uh, our army size after only about four years <laughs> of waiting. Uh, Diederik Funk can be our new leader. We will move them over to uh, to America soon to uh, take care of those damn Iroquois who apparently took my entire colony. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, France is attacking Spain in the defensive war. Ooh, and France lost lost their uh, lost the Thirty Years War. They lost a ton of land to, to Naples. Papal France. <laughs> uh, are we gonna join this war? Spanish La Plata, New Granada, Spanish Peru. I mean, I guess so. I just hope the Spanish are not gonna invade me. And we are moving our army back and losing a shit ton of <laughs> manpower again. <laughs> The Emperor Triumphant. The war of religion in the Empire has ended in a total victory for the Emperor and the Imperial Parliament. And the Imperial Parliament has convened in a diet to proclaim Catholicism as the sole confessional faith of the Holy Roman Empire. Electors who follow a different confession will be stripped of their privileges, and the Emperor is given broad authority to enforce Catholic unity within the Empire. I'm pretty sure that wasn't the outcome of the Thirty Years' War in our case, even though the Catholics on paper won. But still. That's not good for us Protestants, but that's fine, I guess. I guess <laughs> we're losing so many men shipping over all these troops, we might as well just build an army in Indonesia. I think we're going to do that next time, because we're <laughs> losing way too many people on these boats. Simon Stevin, ah. Flemish mathematician and military engineer Simon Stevin was active in many areas of science and engineering, both theoretical and practical. The Dutch word for mathematics, wiskunde, or the art of what is certain, was Stephen's own translation and makes Dutch one of the few European languages where mathematics is not derived from Greek phylet. And that's actually true. Uh, I, uh, w when we get mathematics in like uh, secondary school, uh, people call it wiskunde. Um, he invented a carriage with sails that was propelled solely by the force of wind and acquired a speed which exceeded that of horses. The Tiende, written by uh, Stephen and published in 1585, is translated as decimal arithmetic, teaching how to perform all computations whatsoever by whole numbers without fractions by the four principles of common arithmetic, namely addition, subtraction, blah, blah, blah. So, what they don't tell you is Simon Stevin was a great mathematician, but he was also a siege engineer. Yeah, it says it here, I guess. Military engineer, but he, he, um, he helped fight the Spanish. He was under the employ of uh, Maurice of Nassau, whom we've met. The stadtholder of, uh, of the Netherlands, who I talked about in the last episode. And he was indeed a, uh, a great a uh, mathematician. Wilhelmus, okay, nice. The anthem Wilhelmus or Wilhelmus van Nassau is very popular with parts of the Dutch population and will, in 1932, become recognized as the official na national anthem of the Netherlands. Willem van Oranje or William of Orange is the main character of the anthem which tells of him, his life and why he's fighting against the King of Spain, written in a first-person perspective. For a national anthem, the text and tune of the song are remarkably peaceful. I don't know about that. But yeah, this is still our national anthem. It's, I think, the oldest national anthem in the world. At least, well, it, uh, we haven't had... We haven't, it was not the, the official national anthem until 1932. But it, it's, it's a song that's, uh, that's, that's, that's from the 1570s. And uh, it's still our national anthem. Oh, God. <laughs> we really shouldn't move these armies around like we are. We are losing everything we can. We're losing so much manpower, man, man, man. We really, really shouldn't, have, really shouldn't do this. Okay, Spanish, what are you doing here in the, in the New Netherlands? Get out of here! <laughs> We've got our main fleet here <laughs> to, to fight you. No debate in the Staten General. We need manpower. <laughs> Please give us manpower. <laughs> uh, colonists, sure, why not? There we go. You want to fight the Iroquois, though? Okay, we can take another idea. Caravan power plus 75%, that's actually pretty great. We got another merchant, that's also great. And also but now we have two full idea groups, so we can probably take one of these, right? Plutocratic. 
No, I guess not. I guess there's not the trade and exploration. So that these are sort of combined ideas. If you finish two idea groups, you can pick one of these. But uh, I, not all of the combinations of idea groups have have an idea like that. So I guess we can't pick one. Uh, but we did get another merchant. Uh, one extra merchant. Where, we will be, where will we put you, my guy? Uh, we already have one here in Ivory Coast. We have one in South Africa. We have one here in India as well, right? Yeah. Doesn't really do much, but we have one. We have some one here. We don't, we don't have anybody in the Malaccas. Okay, well, let's uh, get on that then. <laughs> I thought there was already somebody there, but I guess not. We're fighting the Spanish by sea here and there to help our, our friends the French, but I think they might lose this war anyway. Yeah, <laughs> the French are really weakening. It's of course, you know, the friends are always, French are always unstoppable unless they're allied with me, the player. <laughs> um, we can go with another oranges, I think. Gerrit van Oranje, Gerrit. <laughs> Fine. Uh, we can pick another reform. Economical matters. Empower the burgers, curtail the burgers, exploitation of the new world, or mercantilistic approach. Hmm. Indebted to the burgers no longer reduces mercantilism. Embrace the economic theory. Or embrace free trade. Trade power abroad plus 20%. Oh well, hell yeah. <laughs> Institution spread plus 25%. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this one. Embrace free trade. Give me that sweet, sweet trade money. <laughs> we need it. We have so little manpower. Well, we have a ton of manpower, but I've just been an idiot about it. <laughs> We've moved, moved it around the world. We really shouldn't have done that. I mean, that's, that just goes to show you I haven't played this game in a long time. I don't know what's... what's I, I'm not that good of a player. <laughs> oh, we lost an advisor here. We have... Uh, oh, Simon Stevin? Oh, Simon Stevin is gone, I guess. We didn't select him. Oh, no, here he is. He's still here. Let's replace our boy here. And let's put another guy in charge of here. Might as well go for the number three guy because we have a lot of money. This will lose us uh, quite a bit, though. So we get a mil tech guy as well, fort defense, morale of armies, reinforce speed, fort defense for 70%, that's actually fine. It's losing us a lot of money, but we do have two number three, uh, 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 number three advisors, so that's good. Yeah, let them complain. We can also increase our technology, our admin technology. I think we will take another uh, idea first. Land maintenance modifier minus 5%, that's pretty good. Let's do that. Let's uh, let, let the other one uh, be for now. We will uh, wait for the, uh, the the technology here. We can also increase a plutocratic idea. National unrest minus two. Uh, let's, let's hold out on that for a while. Leiden University. Ah, William Prince of Orange, the leader of the Dutch Revolt in the Eighty Years War, founded the Leiden University in 1575, as the emerging Dutch Republic did not have any universities. Spain controlled Southern Leuven, where the only university in the Netherlands was. Yeah, that's over here. That university still exists, actually. It's near Brussels. Or somewhat near. Uh, Prince William decided to found uh, uh, educate citizens for religious purposes and give the country and its government educated men in other fields. Academic study had become important as the scientific renaissance had begun. And Leiden was chosen as a reward for the heroic defense of Leiden against Spanish attacks in the previous year. Philip II of Spain appears on the official foundation certificate as he was still the de jure count of Holland. Although we forbade any subject to study in Leiden. Yeah, let's try to sponsor it, right? We have a university now. It doesn't even give you a university in Den Haag. That's weird. Oh, well. We have, uh, have another province here in uh, South Africa. Does that mean that one of our colonists is now free? Yeah, they are. Let's continue colonizing the Spice Islands. So at least these guys won't randomly attack <laughs> like uh, Native American tribes. Are there Spanish in our land? Maybe we should head back. Let's uh, deal with these Native Americans later. Maybe we, we, we even want to uh, want to uh, construct a local army to deal with them. Oh man. Oh man, we really shouldn't move these armies around. I, I've been an idiot. I realize that now. <laughs> We're losing so much manpower. Oh, here are the Spanish. They're in our country. Can we can we go go with the white piece with you? I didn't expect you to do this well. <laughs> I guess we can hire a shit ton of mercenaries. Try to hold back the Spanish. I think that's probably a good idea. 
we have a lot of money and we really need a lot of men so <laughs> i guess we will we will do that uh free company sure let's have just everybody everybody we can afford grand company sure we want to get rid of these spanish i know it's going to be very very expensive but we don't have the manpower to deal with it otherwise Siege of Brugge is gone. Okay, the Spanish seem to be moving away again. That's good at least. Um, assemble an army. Yes. Now oh, more than 80. <laughs> more than 80 people. Eh? Okay, I think we'll have our mercenaries deal with this. Nicolas Vroom, why don't you head over with your mercenary band and attack the Spanish. Great, thank you. Any other Spanish armies we can attack? I guess not. Oh, yeah, we found some. <laughs> 60,000 versus 24,000, but we have quite low morale. We might need to move in our true army here as well. Oh, really? Are we, are we going to lose this? Are you fucking serious? Oh my god. This fucking game, man. I'm so angry. <laughs> Maybe the next round we will, we will win. The Galleon. Man, <laughs> I'm starting to realize that I kind of suck at this game. <laughs> I'm really not very good. Oh well. What can you do, eh? Uh, where is your uh, Gent and Zeeland? Okay, so not Breda. But let's try again. We now have 60,000 troops against 20,000. So surely we, we will win this. What? What? <laughs> we have 60,000 people here. I guess we don't have enough artillery. Oh, well. We're losing money very fast. But we are holding back the Spanish somewhat. We want to, we want to fight them, man. It's, it's getting pretty dangerous right now. Yep, you're dead. Okay, another try. Another round. 9,000, 6,000. Oh, no, we lost again. God damn it. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. 50 prestige. Sure, why not? Resounding defeat. Did they take any of our land? France will see it, yada yada yada. France will renounce. No, they didn't take any of our land, just French land. Okay, that's good at least. <laughs> we sort of held our own. <laughs> man. I think I'm not. I think we really have to. We really, really have to recover manpower reserves for a while and keep an army in our land or we will die. Mauritian infantry, though. That's good at least. That's the. Uh, the actual Dutch. Yeah, the size and, and depth of the Spanish square gave it staying power, but made it slow and cumbersome to maneuver on the battlefield. It also led to a large percentage of troop, troops being inactive during battles. Maurice of Nassau, the stadtholder of the Netherlands, reduced the total number of men in the formation to make it more mobile and reduced its depth so it maintained the same firepower and shock values. Yes, let's go. Mauritian infantry. We are immediately doing a great uh, military reform. And we will keep these 24,000 men in the Netherlands for all times. <laughs> we will just build another army elsewhere. Man, I really suck at this game. <laughs> I thought I was pretty good, but nope. <laughs> Local trade power, fine. Uh, great defensive thinking, Daniel van Neerkassel. Sure. What did the French lose, actually? Oh, quite a lot. Uh, this is against Hamburg and Nassau. I guess we will we will attack you. We will help you, but we will not fight anybody. You can deal with it completely yourself. We're not going to help you out at all. We're also going to strengthen Brugge. We're going to build a stronger fortress here. At least our rulers are consistently good. We can go for another orangist. 555 five, five ruler. Damn. Truly blessed. And the Burgian conquest of Bremen. Full annexation was demanded. Alright. So the Brandenburgians are expanding. That's good. Frenchies. You really need to recover, man. You are really being surrounded by everybody. <laughs> France is fighting some more Native Americans. France, come on, don't do this to me. Are you fighting anybody close to our colonies or our lack of colonies? <laughs> uh, 
Sarah, maybe. Uh, are we gonna stay allied to France if they're gonna keep starting wars? They're pretty weak right now. I think I'm gonna decline this one. I think we really so we're gonna lose our alliance with France. And also people will hate us for a while for not uh, not calling in uh, not not uh, not not uh, not listening to our ally. But come on. Oh we have an extra merchant, why? Do we uh, hold fifty percent in the Molokkas in trade power? No, we don't. Why do we get an extra merchant? Dutch company of the Molokkas. No, we do actually. We get uh, an extra merchant here. Hmm. We don't have 50%, I think. Yeah, we get an extra merchant. Oh well. Um, that's fine, actually. Uh, well, where will, we, where will we send him, though? We can send him to China. We really need to, to get a hold of some trade power in the Malakas, though. We only have a little bit, so we're not transferring that much trade to uh, South Africa. Hmm. We could travel, uh, we could uh, send some from the Caribbean northwards, although we barely hold any land here. Hmm. Let's see, we could also send some in Europe. We do have a lot of caravan power, so it might be worth it to do like this, like to transfer some from the from the Rhineland to see what that does. Yeah, that's another two gold, I think that's worth it. Let's take the Bill of Rights idea, which will give us minus two unrest everywhere, that's worth it. Another merchant, I think we're running out of places to put them. Um, or should we wait for the technology? Uh, for the military tech, we're a little bit behind. But for Diplo tech and admin tech, I think we can go for an idea. We will get, f uh, we'll go for full economic ideas, that's probably a good idea. Uh, the statute of monopolies and the stamp pack we've unlocked. But those are the uh, these ones. Um, let's see. Yeah, we, we can go for the statute of monopolies now. Let's see uh, if we can take another idea and finish another idea group. No, I, I don't think so. So let's let's do that. Uh, we also have quite a f bit of. Uh, we, we also are at, at, at maximum diplo power, so we should do something with that. Let's increase uh, some of our production in some of our uh, some of our provinces. Let's. Uh, Increase it here. Let's increase some in Antwerpen, Gent, Bruges. There we go. Get rid of some of our Diplo power. Uh, and let's go for the Statute of Monopolies, right? Why not? Plus 10% production efficiency and plus 10% trade efficiency. That's worth it. Stamp Act, Global Terrace. Not really going to help us much, but uh, we might as well uh, enact it, right? Or does it cost money to enact? Uh, we can have three Diplo po policies uh, at the same time. This is costing us zero each month to maintain. Okay, that's good. Okay, we can upgrade all three of our technologies. Let's do it, because we have an, uh, too much uh, military power anyway. We can now build a mill. That's great. Standardization of caliber will give us some new cannons. Chambered demi cannon. Sure. Uh, let's uh, immediately upgrade to that one. Uh, chambered demi cannon. 16th century, we did not only see improvements in artillery maneuverability, but also in the attempts of standardizing the size and weight. That's fine. And we can upgrade uh, to uh, development of maritime law. Publications such as, such as Mare Liberum. Yes, that's the um, the uh, that's the publication by the Dutch jurist uh, Hugo de Groot, who uh, sort of argued for a free sea, who argued that none, no power should be able to claim sovereignty over the sea, which is something that we find rather normal today. But uh, especially the English uh, in the beginning did claim sort of a sovereignty over the North Sea or some areas of the sea. Uh, and the, uh, and uh, Hugo de Groot argued that that should never be possible. And that's kind of the origin of the concept of, uh, of the, the, uh, the, the territorial waters and the uh, international uh, free zone uh, when, you, when you move out of those. Yeah, pretty great. Uh, let's see, we are 24. We are gradually increasing our manpower again. We really need to try to get rid of these Iroquois. Oh, look at this. Did they, did they seriously? Oh my god. <laughs> we have no... Our, our colonial nation is just gone. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is happening? Dutch. There's Dutch people living under Iroquois rule. Are you kidding me? I've never seen this. Look look at how many Dutch people there are here. You pricks. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you, you, you Native American pricks. How, how many soldiers do you have? Tw 25k. Should we go after them? I feel like we should. How is your, your military technology? Terrible. We should be able to handle handle it. Miltech 13 is actually not that bad. It's not as good as we, we are. It's going to cost us a lot of manpower again. But I feel like we are obligated to do it. Can we fabricate a claim here? Or do we have to no CB it? No, it seems like we can. Let's build a spy network. Let's go after these required bastards. They're, they're taking... They've taken all of our Dutch land. How dare they? <laughs> We're really not uh, doing so well this, uh, this episode. I've... Uh, at least the time is moving ahead quite fast now. <laughs> I've probably skipped about 20 minutes of this video so far. We're already in 1590. But uh, trust me, not much has happened. <laughs> uh, yep, let's increase the trade power. We have uh, gradually increased our uh, presence in the East Indies. And we will continue doing that. We have uh, produced... We're producing now some more spices. Some more cloves. Some more uh, regular old spices. Which is always good. Um, you guys can also be added to the trade company. Yep. We are definitely gonna go try and attack these Iroquois bastards. What a bunch of bricks. <laughs> okay, we've we've now got enough spy network that we can fabricate a claim on Manhattan. Let's immediately do that. <laughs> We're gonna go to war with these Iroquois pricks. What a bunch of bastards. Let's do it. Declare war. Oh, we need uh, we need to have the conquest castle belly. Yes, declare war. Conquest castle belly. Confirm. We have a diplomat to send. Okay, fine. Get rid of these. Fifty days. We're gonna lose all of our manpower once again. <laughs> but I want to retake the New Netherlands, man. <laughs> these Iroquois bastards. I've never seen that. I've never seen them be this successful. Of course, it's the only game where I. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, so it's, it's of, of course it's in the game where I'm actually playing that uh, that I see this. I'm actually playing the Netherlands. We will lose a, once again a ton of manpower, but oh well, there's not much we can do. I think we really want this uh, this war to uh, to be we want to be victorious in this war to celebrate. We want to uh, release our uh, our Dutch uh, population under the uh, Native American yoke. Uh, let's let the stat how the person handle this. That's fine. High naval attrition, really. I don't want that. Mm. I guess we don't have any ports here. I guess maybe had to uh, ship Marta then. For now, until we capture this uh, this this fortress. Are we already losing boats? Great, fantastic. Okay, I think we were just about in time there. There's a lot of Mutt and Native Americans here. <laughs> they might actually win in a battle against us. We have a good general. These guys are attacking me now, it seems. I do hope that our superior military technology will save us here. Oh no, they're moving to here. They're 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 they're, they're gathering an army. I think we might not stand a chance here. Actually, you might want to hire some uh, some mercenaries in the Netherlands to help us. That might be a good idea. What's the largest mercenary band that's here? These guys have a minus 25 something. Land attrition. Okay, that's great actually. Timbuktu. Sure. You guys? I want to hire you guys. Why can't, we, why can't we hire you guys? Let's try again. Sahel Company. Not within range. Okay, fair enough. Can we hire them in St. Martin maybe? That would be great actually. We can hire some people in Sip Marta, then we can take them over with our uh, our fleet. They are currently in Sip Marta, so that's actually a great idea. Um, let's do that. How many people are these? Okay, that's another 20k. I think we need them, because there's, there's a lot of huge army of Native Americans gathering here. 64,000. Here's their army. Uh, 33,000. Uh, how about the fleet? I think we will wait until we capture Manhattan, so that we at least won't suffer so much so much naval attrition. Okay, we, we captured Manhattan. That's good at least. Now let's send over our uh, mercenaries here. You guys, 
let's head over to Manhattan and see if we can't defeat some of these massive, massive Native American armies that are gathering here. <laughs> we shouldn't suffer any naval attrition now, should we? No, we, we we're not. Okay, great. Hey, where, where are the uh, the the? Uh, where are these guys? Why are they not here? Oh, for fuck's sake! Can we not split them up? Because they're too large. You cannot. Oh my god. This game, man. I hate it sometimes. <laughs> okay, I guess we have to hire a smaller troop. And we just lost a ton of money. Fantastic. Okay. Let's hire some mercenaries. We can just hire them uh, right now here. That's fine then. Uh, let's hire all the mercenaries we can. We have the money, so why risk it, right? Why risk the uh, the loss of, uh, of, uh, of manpower that we cannot afford? I hope that the English didn't join them. No, it's just it's just Native America, so that's good at least. We want all our Dutch provinces back, so we want this, 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 this. Actually, we want all of it, all of it up to the Appalachians. We want this whole thing. We want to just completely annihilate these Iroquois. We will get a ton of uh, of aggressive expansion, but it's all Native American tribes, it seems. So that doesn't really matter. <laughs> we don't we don't care what they think of us. Okay, uh, let's have our uh, our morale tick up a bit. And then attack these Native American assholes. Okay, 68,000 troops are here. Let's hire some uh, some generals for them. And let's go. 35 versus 66. And we're destroying them. We stack wipe them immediately. 8,000 losses for them. Let's head here, over here as well. Completely smashed. Fantastic. <laughs> I think we will we will keep our regular army down here and have our mercenaries handle uh, handle the uh, the sieges. So we, we can we can afford uh, we can afford money losses. We have plenty of money, but we cannot really afford manpower losses anymore. So let's keep these guys in uh, in Manhattan. Let's move up to uh, to conquer the rest of these provinces. You guys head here. You guys head here. There's another uh, Native American army gathering here, so I think we will do another uh, sweep of that with all of our three armies together. But let's just capture what we can in the meantime. Colony self-sustaining, great. East Timor, okay. We will... Uh, take our colonists back and send them here. We are gradually expanding in Indonesia as well. Just that it's not, it's just not, it's not as flashy as this massive war <laughs> in um, in uh, in uh, America. We have to regrab all the land in the uh, on the east side of the Appalachian Mountains. Oh wait! Uh, before you do anything, you guys can head over here. Now you can go. Yes, we should, we should stack wipe them again. We are? Okay, great. You guys head back to Manhattan before you lose too many men. We'll have our uh, our mercenaries handle these guys. We should not be losing uh, manpower for losing these mercenaries, right? That's that's right, I think. Uh, let's head the, have the big army head over to their fort. And the little army can continue grabbing their land, their provinces. Bloody Iroquois. <laughs> That's that it's because the uh, the AI just decided to attack them or something. I don't know. And not call us in. I hope we didn't miss the call to arms. That would that would suck. I, I probably I'm pretty sure we didn't. Losing 20 gold a month. It, it feels so good to have this much money. We make a hundred gold a month from trade. <laughs> What's that other one? Looting foreign cities. Okay. We foreign refugees. Yeah, let them cross. We will we will whatever foreign refugees want to hide in our lands. We will let them. Uh, who are we at war with exactly? Okay, just the whole northeast. Okay. <laughs> we will just grab their capital and then grab what we can in the east here. I think we will just grab everything that we occupy right now. Okay, I think that should be enough. Let's grab this one as well. No, that's not enough. Demand succeed war score, so we need to keep going. But we will. We still have plenty of time. We, uh, we will not lose our money anytime soon. So let's do it. I think we, we handled this pretty well. We grabbed Manhattan with our regular army. 
which lost us some manpower, but then we could hire mercenaries from there, which was great. 62%. Let's continue going, guys. Want to grab whatever we can. Any Native Americans that are uh, that are here, we will we will we'll take. We will grab. We will destroy them. 68%. I think we can manage. You you shouldn't have messed with the Dutch man. <laughs> you you Iroquois shouldn't have messed with us. How the how the Nasoni right? How the Nasoni Confederacy shouldn't have messed with us. It's quite interesting. The, the Iroquois it was they were quite an organized society. It was like five five tribes right here, and they they gathered together in sort of a sort of a parliament kind of structure. Every year they gathered, and there was it was very formalized, similar to uh, parliaments in Europe. It's a very interesting uh, group of uh, Native Americans, and uh, they fought against the colon uh, the colonists uh, often. And there was like a huge confederacy at the end, uh, Tecumseh's confederacy, which nearly defeated, well, not nearly defeated, but put up a really really good fight against the colonists. Uh, we should encourage for fine whatever. Do you want a statist or an orangist? You want to keep the balance of power, right? So I guess orangist, unless the Oh, I'm just, just a better better candidate anyway. Gerbrand van Oranje. Okay, we, we are at 74%. We're nearly done. Uh, people, let's head down here and grab these... Uh, attack these Native Americans. Okay, this is going to be a tricky one. I think we will not take any chances and just have all of our mercs together. Attack these, uh, these Native Americans. Yeah, we still won. 75%. They're still not ready to surrender, eh? People, what are you doing? You should surrender to me, man. Just just accept the inevitability of, of Dutch supremacy, man. Yep, okay, great. There will be a big coalition forming against us, but that's fine. Dutch conquest of Manahatan. 118k dead <laughs> Indians and 66k dead, well, mostly mercenaries, so I don't really care that much. Okay, great. Let's core all of them. And let's have our mercenaries head back. I think we will keep our army in here for now. Is it already changed? Yeah, it's all changed back to uh, to what it was, the names. So that's good. And we, we even grabbed some more provinces. Everybody's entering coalitions against us. That makes sense. We will core what we can. But we cannot core everything yet. But everything, everybody is entering a military coalition against us. That's fine. Not gonna attack any Native Americans soon anyway. Um, and we have no debate in the Stato General. I would like something that reduces unrest, if that's possible. Mm. And this one, I guess, uh, gives unrest in provinces that are occupied by heathens, which is in the New World. Let's grant some, uh, let's just bribe some people. There we go. Yep, everybody is entering in a military coalition. That's all fine. You do you. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Should rebuild our fleet a little bit. We also I, I, I didn't I didn't uh, didn't show you this, but we upgraded the fleet to the latest uh, designs yet. The designs uh, during the war it cost us about a thousand gold, but we now have all galleons. I think we should probably do the same with the trading fleet, or can we not do that yet? I think we can. Let's see. Let's head back to Brugge. We upgrade you guys. Yep. Early frigate. Great. 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 Protect trade. We need to keep uh, our fleet as up to date as we can, and we have the money for it. So I don't really, <laughs> I don't really care. If anything costs money, I'm fine. Uh, embrace free trade. That's what we did here. We can do another reform. Consolidation of power. Broaden executive powers. Mm, we can do devolution of powers. We can do consolidated power. Or we can do new men. Our republic can't trust those staying too long in power. We prefer to select new men. Will not be meddled with it with in corruption and other shady business. Plus one uh, bonus and uh, a little bit of reduction in absolutism, but that's I think fine. The evolution of powers gives gives us more autonomy uh, reduction. That's pretty good. Broaden executive powers. I think we will go for new men. Yeah, we're basically done reforming our government, right? Oh, no, 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 not quite yet. We still have the guiding principle. We have the electorate. Uh, and we have a office selection. 
and question of dictatorship, all right. We will keep an eye on the uh, the newfound colonies in uh, the New World, though. <laughs> all these Dutchmen are liberated. And we even grabbed some uh, some Native American land. That was a big war, but we won. Ah, but, and, then, and they're back. <laughs> the New Netherlands is back. How will we call it? New Netherlands 2.0. Oh, the new... <laughs> new, new Netherlands. Because <laughs> they're new again, right? There we go. New, new Netherlands. <laughs> will they now core their own prophecies here then? Yeah, I guess so. No, they, they automatically got cores here, it seems. Okay, that's fine. Okay, now don't don't randomly attack uh, <laughs> attack the Indians again. Okay, guys, <laughs> please stay like this. The Creek Federation. Wow, I think the Native Americans are maybe a bit overpowered <laughs> in this uh, in this this uh, this mod uh, this this expansion pack. Um, okay, you're quiet. They hate us, but that's fine. What else can we do? We are back at more or less full manpower. So we can go back to war again. I think we will just send our army back to the home country. We might want to expand it a little bit as well. Maybe have another uh, 12,000 or so. Um, and we might want to return to war with Majapahit, right? I think probably they're running behind a bit on Miltech. So hopefully this time we will be able to beat them easily, more easily. Mm. I think we're going to build a, a, the Royal... Royal Dutch, the, the, the Knil, Koninklijk Nederlands in these leger, the uh, the military of the uh, the colony. So we have, we have 16, 18 men we can uh, we can muster here. Let's do ten of these, two of these, and six of six cannons. That's eighteen thousand, right? That should be uh, more or less okay. So from what I understand, in the later game, the um, the, the, the cavalry doesn't really matter, so they, they outflank. Uh, they outflank the uh, the enemy, but if you have more than two or four, that doesn't really uh, help you much. But uh, uh, if, if you guys know the meta, if you guys know what the best army uh, army selection is here, then let me know. Oh, we have another available merchant. Why? I guess maybe because of the new, the new Netherlands. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know they also got. Uh, didn't know they also got. Uh, you also got a free merchant there. Okay, we will improve the relations with you guys again. And we have another merchant, so what will we do with that? I think now we can uh, probably grab some land, some uh, some trade in the Caribbean. So we do have a trade center here in St. Maarten. It might be worth it to, uh, to grab some of that. Yep, 7. And then we will move 14 on from uh, the New Amsterdam to, uh, to the east. Great. Fantastic. So much money. <laughs> we, remember that we also have three level three <laughs> advisors as well. So we are making just a shitload of money. It's just insane. How is our... Yeah, it's 72% of our income is uh, from trade. You might want to promote mercantilism a little bit. Uh, or we can take a, an idea. Another free merchant. We're getting to a point where I really don't need them. <laughs> but hey, it's, uh, it's always good. We could go for a uh, Chinese trade route, right? So we're already in Malacca. We could go for uh, for Canton here. Put a merchant here, Adrian Doutrein. Sure, why not? You're gonna love being Dutch. You might want to colonize uh, Taiwan as well, because that's also uh, that's also uh, historical. Uh, is this it's still free now. China colonized them, I guess. Shun. Hmm. I guess the Ming fell. You have the Shun Dynasty now, and they colonized Taiwan already. Oh well. The tulip mania. Ah, the tulip was introduced in Europe in the 1550s from the Ottoman Empire. They quickly became popular among the rich merchants of the Netherlands as a luxury item. The market grew and in 1634, when demand increased in France, speculators entered the market. In 1636, a futures market was created and during the autumn and winter, the prices skyrocketed until the prices collapsed in February 1637. The result was the bankruptcy of many and an economic disaster. This is bad. But the state could alleviate the losses, 10 inflation. We do have quite a few things that reduce inflation, right? Yeah, we have 0.3 reduction a year. 
And one inflation. Yeah, no. But, uh, yeah, we, we can go for the 10 inflation. That's fine. Uh, we can also reduce it, I think, by... Yeah, by, by using admin points. Let's do that. And let's, let's reduce it. Let, let's have it reduced at a, at a regular rate as well. Okay, our armies are almost back in the Netherlands. Here they are. We're also going to rebuild our fleet a little bit. So we need at least the 24... Uh, 24 transports. And I would also like... Uh, one more Gallias, maybe? And also, maybe we should also build an Indian fleet. Although I guess, yeah, I guess it's less, less, less urgent. We can just send over our, our main fleet. Uh, what is the fleet size of the British? 56 ships, okay. Hmm. I think we're gonna have to do... Uh, Okay, my, <laughs> my parents just called. They uh, they want to visit me, which is fine. I haven't seen them in a while. So I'm going to quit the recording soon. And I will probably not be able to put it up today, which is Sunday. It will probably be up on, I don't know, Monday or Thursday. Monday or Tuesday. Uh, but what I, what I was saying is we're going to build up our fleet a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, how many do we have? We have eight uh, galleons. Let's make, make that 20 galleons. Seven and then uh, eight, I guess. Let's do that and uh, make sure that we, we keep on uh, naval parity with the British. Those are our main naval rivals, and the French are really, really struggling right now. <laughs> 18k soldiers, so we have a larger army than France. <laughs> and we're gonna build a an army in uh, in the Dutch East Indies, but uh, we need a little bit more manpower for that. Could just build some uh, some manpower buildings. Let's do that. National manpower modifier. Let's, let's build a couple. Just to have some uh, some more manpower. We lost an advisor, an admin advisor. Let's replace him with. Oh, we need an inflation reduction guy. So let's get Hendrik Hendrik Zoutman in here. Global trade. Who? Goods have been moved across continents since antiquity, but where this was previously limited to a set number of routes and goods, such as manufactured goods of India and China finding their way across the Indian Ocean and along the Silk Road, all trade is now increasingly becoming part of a greater world network. With the discovery of the Americas, sea routes around Africa and the crossing of the Pacific Ocean, local trade networks are being connected into one world-spanning interconnected, interconnected web. Silver mines in the Andes is now being boxed and taken via Europe all the way to China and India. Iron mines and rods in Scandinavia is being sold in West Africa by English merchants. Uh, Dutch merchants, man. And others are making a fortune just, just distributing cloth and spices within the Southeast Asian trade sphere. Local Indian merchants are investing in future European trade ventures. It may still be too early to speak of a truly global economy, but surely the first seeds have been sown. Okay, so it's Amsterdam gets global trade hub. I think we, we it, it starts in yeah it's it's appeared in Amsterdam, great. So we we started the the new institution, global trade. I mean it makes sense. We should probably uh, increase the size of Amsterdam a bit. So we, we already get uh, get a reduced uh, uh, reduced uh, development cost there anyway. All right, Amsterdam is the birthplace of global trade. When can we when can we embrace it? Uh, 9.7, okay, so it needs to go to at least one other province. Or we could, I guess, increase, because I think it's, it's related to development, right? If we increase Amsterdam just a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we can now embrace it. Thank you. Okay, we have embraced global trade, and we will get another merchant. <laughs> Yet another merchant. <laughs> okay, I think that's a, that's a fine place to end the episode. Uh, uh, we, had, uh, we, had, we struggled a bit at the, at the beginning. We, uh, we lost a lot of manpower and made some costly mistakes. We, um, we lost most of uh, the New Netherlands to the Iroquois. But we recovered. We recovered the New Netherlands. We recovered the uh, prime position in global trade. And right now, I'm fairly certain we are the richest country in the world. Let's have a look. We're number three, I guess. I figured we would be number one, but I guess we're number three after the Ottomans. <laughs> and the Chinese. 
<laughs> we're ahead of the Spanish, the Russians, the British. We, we make double the amount that the British do. And remember that they have completely unified their whole island, so they should be overtaking us by a lot. We're the Spanish. Oh, they're here. We, we, we make more than the Spanish. We're insanely rich with uh, looking at how, how little development we have. We are insanely rich. So uh, that was the goal of this campaign. <laughs> so already we achieved that. But uh, of course we're not there yet. We want to be... Next episode we will probably try and grab some trade power over here in Malacca. After we uh, build a uh, Dutch uh, Dutch Indies army. We will probably try to take over Java again. Since, since it seems they are already struggling with uh, peasant revolts. We will continue expanding in the Moluccas. Getting uh, a monopoly on all spice trade. And uh, yeah, we will of course, hopefully this time, be able to uh, to uh, to preserve the Dutch East Indies. And uh, maybe, just maybe, uh, the Iroquois will kick out the French for us, and we can grab, we can we can conquer them. We will have a Dutch New England, quote unquote. Yes. So um, it was a dynamic episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I know that the views on this this uh, this series have not been uh, as high. As, uh, as they have been on my CK2 stuff. But hey, I, I wanted to do something else. And uh, I hope that uh, those few of you still watching do still enjoy. And I will finish this series. We will uh, certainly... Well, I think if I finish this series all the way up to 1800, it will probably be the first Europa Universalis 4 series that I've ever finished. <laughs> so that, that'll be interesting. I never really get this far. But, you know, making, uh, making a video about it always motivates me to keep going. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments, any tips, if I've ever made any huge mistakes, which is uh, more or less inevitable, let me know. Um, if you, there's anything you'd like to see, let me know as well. If uh, you think I should focus on a different area, let me know. I always like to hear from you guys. I also have a Discord and a Reddit. Uh, links in the description. So uh, check those out if you want. I even have a donation thingy, but nobody's ever used it. <laughs> it's the little dollar sign on the bottom of the video if you want to give me some money. Not necessary, but uh, you know, if you want, feel free. Uh, yes, thank you guys for watching, and the next episode should be up in a few days. Bye-bye.